Hello? Hello, hello. We're playing we're playing an anime girl mod. Hello, Poi, welcome. Oh my goodness. Not an anime girl. <laughs> Which supposedly, by the way, this the current BGM, I I am to my best understanding, this is Hifumi's song character theme, the lo-fi remix of or whatever. How's it going? Oh, hey, that's yours. Nice. I was scrolling down and trying to find... There's all these donations for... For the goddamn marrying of any girl that's not any of the angel girls. And I'm trying to find the, <laughs> the next membership one. And it is, uh, it's down there. Wow, an anime girl? That's only half the workshop. How did you find a character so rare? Yeah. Um, I did not vet this mod at all. Uh, no, I, I did not pick this under the assumption that it was going to be exceptionally good. Frankly, I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm so goddamn tired. Um, so I just wanted to, to play the anime girl mod. And that's, that's it. That's all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like there, I'm in the, I'm in the weird in-between period of, of finishing things, and then those things are now done, right? And then it's like, do I rest? Do I not rest? Do I need to continue grinding? Can I just stop forever <laughs> you know what i mean yeah uh picked up blast blue back up for a bit after one early loss with noel and s as well as two runs with s that made it to sasano of phase three and died uh i want to run with s on entropy 100 true yeah i i've also been trying to get one um off stream and I have similarly pretty consistently made it to Sasanawo. Um, but I think my builds just haven't been doing enough damage. So I don't know what my issue is, I suppose. But what my experience has been, I have not been doing enough damage. Sometimes I do a lot of damage. And then sometimes I don't. <laughs> and it seems like I'm picking like the same stuff right uh but i'm not not quite not quite getting there so i don't know that's what we're gonna be trying to do on on wednesday the winning run stacked up 130 percent damage from the black market perfect clear bonus that's fair oh yeah they're on like one of the runs i i like perfect cleared all the bosses <laughs> and I was like, all right, we perfect, we perfect cleared, like, actually, it might have only been three. I was going to say four bosses, I think. So this, this runs a banger. We're going to, we're going to pop off this run. Uh, I did not. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I was like, we're definitely, we're definitely popping off. I, like, I might need to just change, like, what, what, what things I'm using, right? Um, like, oh, I, I might just need to change what, um, what, what are they called again? The, the, the different, <laughs> welcome Yuki. The, the different traits or whatever. 
What traits have you been using, Poi? Because I keep using... I keep using cold damage. Because I keep thinking, like, oh, cold damage is, like, good. Every ass build, I had Shadow Ice Spike and Infinite Ice Spike, which is a very potent combination. I might try that. That's the one you need Dashing Shadow and Ice Spike, right? Cause, so maybe maybe I'll farm for something like that. I've also been using Ragna as my support, which um, I'm not huge on Ragna, but he has the he has the traits that I farmed. So because like you couldn't farm traits before, they would like, you know, like that that just like wouldn't work. Um So yeah, maybe I'll just like farm some stuff after stream. Yeah, I don't know. I'm real sorry, but like I just I just feel super off today. So my apologies if 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 it's kind of off. Not that, you know, my streams are particularly, you know, immensely popular. I don't need to be concerned about letting down thousands of viewers by throwing a shitty stream, but I definitely feel off. I'm using Noel and Kokonoe just because they had decent legacy tactics. Yeah, um, the... I want to make a character who has, like, the, the good, like, good tactics. Like, a, a passive tactic. I think I need, like, a good passive tactic. Because Ragnar's, path, path, Rag, Ragnar's passive tactic doesn't do anything. I think Kokonoe's does. Noel's does not do anything. <laughs> Noel's passive tactic is, like... When you deal damage from far away, and it's like, okay, that's literally wasted. That literally doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, hope it's nothing too bad. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think job search has just sort of been stressing me out. Because, you know... <laughs> You know when you know when all of your colleagues are basically like, yeah, all of your stuff is fire. Like it's all good. Like all of the stuff you're showing off looks really good. Like it makes you look really smart. Like someone you would hire for like a technician job. It's like, wow, thank you. I really appreciate that. And then just like you just like don't don't get called back. So <laughs> I'm like, cool. I it makes me makes me feel unconfident, I suppose. That's that's what's weighing on me, I think. And then I suppose from there I kind of think about oh, like, do I want to like there's some projects that I maybe want to like pick up and put my energy into, and then like I don't um then I don't end up putting like what am I trying to say? There are projects I would like to pick up, and then I'm like, do I pick up those projects or do I not, I suppose? Or should I be putting my energy into things? Applying to more places, for example. So, you know. Like, something I wanted to do, actually, I was thinking about, and I was like, oh, this is, like, a cool idea. I was wondering if I wanted to do one of those, like, hour-long videos where I, like, like I, I spliced together, like, a full game. I was thinking of doing that for Unicorn Overlord because I, I think it's really funny just how much money people put towards me not marrying the elf. <laughs> it's like, this, this seems like content. I feel like if we edited together one hour of that, like, that'd be pretty good, but I'm also, uh, like, kind of a novice video editor. Uh, and also, that's, like, like, an hour worth of stuff. <laughs> and then I have to, like, go back and, and re-watch all of it and see, 
I suppose. Like, there's that too. Because I don't, like, record my VODs while I'm live. So I would need to literally open the the video and then, like, record it via Streamlabs. And then that's, like, the footage I would use. So, you know. It's like, that seems like it is going to be a lot of effort. Which I don't mind doing. But should I not do that? and do something else. <laughs> uh, is it worth it, you could say? And I don't know the answer to that question. And because I don't know the answer to that question, I get sad. <laughs> uh, yeah. I had a gin with Ice Spike and Infinite Ice Spike, and then literally anyone with Shadow Dash and Shadow Dash Ice Spike, that'd be perfect. Yeah, that's fair. I'm gonna try doing that, because I know the, the Ice Spike Dash synergy is quite good. So maybe I, I, I just need, like, a, a powerful starting synergy. Because I basically just chose, like, Cold Attack, and then, <laughs> like, that's, that's it. Because I thought um, S's... Crest attacks are good for proccing cold. But I don't even know if that's true, honestly. Remember, right now the industry is in a downturn. However, considering spin consider spinning into some things of adjacent industries. You can also always spoil the next generations being their teacher. Sure. Do it. My chat holds me at gunpoint for not marrying the cute generic elf girl. Consider doing it Maxor style. Yeah, that's. I suppose that's the other thing is I would need to look for some like editing inspiration. I suppose figure out what style would be good. Yeah. Anyways, it's a, it's a lot to think about. I kind of just want to, like, go lie down and not do anything. <laughs> I don't know. Starting with infinite ice spike is a huge boon because then you don't have to choose the bad ice attack path. Yes. Because there's the path that's good for, like, clearing mobs, and then there's, like, the path that's better for stacking damage. Yeah. Anyways, I'll look into it. I I don't remember what my gin has, but I think farming good traits is something that I can do. I'm gonna go do that. <clears throat> Anyways, do we want to play some Spire? There's a, there's a cute anime girl. Look. Look, it's a... Look at how happy she is. Remember the speech. Yes, I do need to do the speech. Um, yeah. Oh, that was the other thing, too, is I wanted to maybe edit together, like, like design the Spire videos. Because I feel like those can be, bo like, boiled down to maybe, like, ten minutes, probably. And just be, like, a concrete chunk of, like, this is actually what I think about this. And here are some useful observations that I feel like I made. Right? Um, that's all a lot of work. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, welcome everyone to Design the Spire, where we play mods and slay the Spire. And see what's going on with them. How's their design? How do their cards fit together? Or maybe not the most concerned with being like, hey, this card is this other card, except like slightly better. Or this card is this other card, but slightly worse. Because um, that's useful sometimes, but not all the time. So what we're more concerned with is like, you know, how do the cards fit together? Uh, how does it play? Is it kind of like achieving what it's going for? Um, which is all super esoteric stuff that is hard to tell. But honestly, um, I feel like when there's 
when there's something more clear about the design, it does come through. Um, and that's always fun. Uh, today we're playing an anime girl. <laughs> Which anime girl mods unfortunately have the tendency of being bad. <laughs> so I'm super excited to figure out um, how, how this mod is. All I know about Hifumi is that she is obsessed with Peroro. Um, that's, that's it. That's all. <laughs> that's my, and also that her brain is a brick. Probably. That's what I know. That's that, that's, that's, that's it. That's what I got. That's my understanding. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's nice to live a simple life. That's it. Especially good to get the 15-30 minutes of fluff in the beginning out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of the point of the stream video. Yeah, I... Yeah. Yeah. There's also a lot of... Um, I think there's a lot of time spent, like, figuring stuff out, too, and then sort of, like... There, there's a lot of evaluating, I suppose. I usually feel like I know what I want to say by the end of, like, two hours, but the, the beginning is very, like, like, I have no idea. Because design is a, a weird thing. It's a, it's a weird, weird thing. I don't know. I guess it's, it's interesting, because the thing that I feel is that, like, you know, I... Particularly pragmatic people, I think, come to the conclusion of, like, like, what is the purpose of design? Like, I don't understand. Like, just make the thing good. I don't get it. <laughs> and the problem is that it it's just a series of... It's just a series of decisions that have some kind of core ideology behind it. I don't know if that makes sense. But it's like, what we wanted to do with the Hifumi mod was have her use the Peruro card every single battle. And it's good every time because that's, that's it. That's what we're going for. So then that single constraint builds like an entire identity of like what the rest of the gameplay looks like. Just, like, the, the simplest design constraint can, like, create the identity for the gameplay. And then you have to make a bunch of decisions that keep those constraints in mind. Uh, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> so, at the start of the first combat, gain 75 gold, then choose and obtain one random pair of row goods. Uh, it, interesting that they... Do not add the gold to the gold count. It is instead part of the relic. I wonder if the purpose of that is so that you can relic swap. Nothing weird with the HP on this character. Uh, so let's try it. <clears throat> hey, look. It's an anime girl. <laughs> Drawn in paint. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, a special stackable relic that uses effects through cards can be obtained or can obtain it at the Peroro Goods Shop. Oh yeah, that that would make sense too. It also dodges like if you have to, you know, lose all your gold get a rare relic. That makes sense. Uh, let's try getting gold or getting rid of our gold. That's what I meant to say. And we got. The worst one. We got the shovel. Oh, starting deck. My apologies. Oh, they have a thing. Okay. For the special Peroro Goods Relic. Uh, has no effect on its own. You can use... I'm just going to call it the goods because I don't want to say Peroro 70 times. I think I'm good. <laughs> okay has no effect on its own, but you can use the effect by using a card that uses the effect. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So there will be cards which assumably use the relic effects. Ooh. 
Uh, I thought I clicked next and it went to the pause screen, so I don't know what that means. Backpack. Deal 10 damage. Uh, deal 8 damage to all enemies. Okay. So we kind of have like a... Does this happen? Does this happen every time? So we can either get deal damage, deal AoE damage or block. Um, I'm going to say that usually you want like... Like when AoE is good, it's quite good. So perhaps we'll put it over there. When using deal 8, plus 2 per stack damage to all enemies. Per stack. How do we get stack? Select goods and use the effect. Okay. Cool. Start of first combat is what it said. Yeah. No, I, I was wondering if like... Because it looked like you could get more. So I wonder. Could help you with some things for editing. I'm starting to try and splinter off my day job. If I can get some videos under a clip channel. I... I go will de sick as fuck mutual self benefit. <laughs> Relax, Rue. Calm down. Relax. Why are we crying? We don't need to cry. It's fine. <laughs> you can get more than one of each good. That's the stack. Okay. I was just wondering how do I get more goods? So gain seven block, discard a card, collect one. So. So, okay. Um, okay, so we have we have a buyback. So we, we can buy back the thing we just did. So we can do this again. So that's kind of cool. I guess I could have looked at the, the deck first. But yeah, we have 10 cards, nothing weird there. And I suppose the idea would be that you do this so that you can use the goods and then you can buy it back and play it again, which which costs three. Uh, like that. Like that we can do this. This is, a, this is a very simple... You draw both of them, and then you just do the thing twice. Which is cool. I don't know what it does when there are more... More cards in the discard. Let's see if we can do this, and then draw it again. Well, we drew the same stuff again. We literally drew both of it at the same time. So I guess we're just... I guess we're just obliterating them with, with our goods. Uncollectible. Collect three. Oh, that's really... In, that's a very interesting way to prevent you from infinite comboing. That's cool. Okay, take X cards from your discard pile into your hand in the order in which they were discarded. When your discard pile is empty, draw cards equal to what is missing. So if there are no cards in your discard... So that's interesting. So if you have nothing to do, then you at least draw cards. That's good. It's good to have... I, I actually kind of ran into the same problem where I was like, oh, I feel like a lot of the buyback cards are bad when you... Um, when you have nothing in the discard? Uh, yeah, the mod is translated, I... I believe. I believe it is translated. Buried. This card will not return from your discard pile to your draw pile, even if your draw pile is empty. Oh! So you can pick up these cards with the collect cards. Oh! That's kind of cool. So, like, you can use this once, and then you can either pick it up again with your organized or you can wait until you reshuffle then pick it up with organized as well this is so wow that's actually really interesting um because it also changes your turnover rate so like i can add this to my deck and i would still have a turnover rate of two like on the second reshuffle that's really cool Add two landmines into your discard pile. I'm assuming these happen after. Oh, and they're buried. Wow, this is really cool. Okay, so I guess the idea is we make 
we make resources in our discard and then we collect them and then we use them. That's really fucking cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is block. And then if you have the payoff, you deal damage. So let's take this one. This seems really good. Uh, so we got to do that. Um, so, okay. So my question, yeah, does this, yeah, so, so what does it take from, in the order in which they were discarded? So it, it goes from bottom, not top, because it's hovering landmine right now. So, okay, and you pull from the bottom. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing, is it doesn't... It, it collects from the bottom, not the top. Oh, that's what, is that why you put top in quotes? Yeah, so the landmines are always going to be at the top. Ah, I see what you mean. So I wonder if we put... Yeah, so if we put another buried card, like if we played a second buried card, then which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if we can change what's buried or not. Also, welcome Cavalier. Okay. Um, to figure that one out. Ugh. Yeah, I kind of wonder what the, the repercussions of, of just playing buried cards a bunch of times is going to be. <laughs> is, it, is it supposed to be funny that we found a shovel? Is that like a funny funny meme. Deals two additional damage for all of your cards containing Perro. That's very funny. <laughs> land mine, land yours. <laughs> While it's less of an issue, might not even be one at all. The fact that the land mines don't exhaust is a bit odd. Yeah. I was gonna say, it to your comment of the top card is always going to be like the landmine you just picked up. So I guess what you would need to do, if you want to cycle through your collects, I guess what you do is you collect like, there was the collect three card, right? So I could like collect three and then not play those cards. And then that like cycles off the buried cards until the reshuffle. But I feel like there's already going to be Like, I wonder if putting, like, playing another card which buries things changes the order. Like, like does it take from the bottom or the top? I, my understanding is that it takes it from the bottom, which either means you have to cycle through those cards, and then do they... I, I don't think they stay at the bottom. That's the thing. So buried cards are just the order of the things until you reshuffle. Uh, unplayable, uncollectible. Add two limitations into your discard. Unplayable, uncollectible. So this... So this is like adding a wound? It's a wound, except you can't collect it. I thought it meant you, you couldn't find a second copy if you had one in your deck. Like, you can't collect more than one. Oh. Uh, start each combat with this card in your discard pile. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can always buy back this and it deals 22. Huh. 
So this is interesting. Like having a card that's always like, it starts in your discard pile. So this is always, this is always gonna be the first one in your discard pile. So you can always at least collect this card. Let's try it. That seems cool. Yeah, so now what we can do is we can pick up that card. Oh, that makes so much sense too. But again, pretty simple things, but like, you know, the fact that this costs two means that you can always like organized into it. Yeah, Grave is like, they, it just, it sets up what you start with. If you, cause you're gonna draw, you're gonna draw organized before you flip your deck over, which means that you'll always have an opportunity to pick up this card. But if it is not the card you wanna pick up, then you can wait for reshuffle. Welcome Cesar. Exhaust all buried cards in your discard. Deal seven damage to all enemies for each exhausted card. That's really fucking cool. Okay, so... So we can just build up a... We can just bury a bunch of shit and then, <laughs> and then deal like a bazillion damage. That's really cool. I mean... That's probably why these don't exhaust, right, boy? So you can minefield, but then not feel bad when, like, you want a critical mass of stuff. Two pounder? <laughs> Flip me over, Flar? What? What do you, what do you mean, flip you over? If you don't collect it, it's a card that will show up on the shuffle, which is a fair downside on a two mana deal 22. Well, the thing is, it doesn't have uh, buried. So this thing will, I know that you're saying that it's gonna reshuffle, but the thing is like, it's always gonna do that, I guess. I guess the weird thing about this card is that it makes my first organized always get this card before reshuffle, which does kind of suck. Like, for example, if I wanted to lead on some other card, then like slow starter is, is what I would actually start with, which kind of sucks. Deal six damage, add one, like another card to your hand, I suppose. What does artillery do? If this card remains in your hand at the end of turn, activate its effect to discard it. Targets are chosen randomly. Oh. This is, this is one damage. One damage deal 12, but one of it's random, like half of it's random. That's fine, right? So artillery is, is just like putting stuff in your hand. Oh, that's so interesting. This card doesn't exhaust. Um. So you might be able to collect this card and then just put it in your hand. Bit better than Twin Strike, but not by much. Yeah, I like how this interacts with collect. Because of, because of that card that's like collect three. So what you can do is you can like play this card and then you can maybe like pick the card up again, but then play it for free because you picked it up with collect. So that makes a lot of sense. It's unfortunate that it doesn't have buried. Yeah, it's a common. So that's probably why. I wouldn't be surprised if there was like an artillery that has buried at like a higher rarity maybe. But yeah, it would be really sweet if you could just like play this a bunch of times and then they all had buried. You play the collect three card and then you're like, cool, I just picked up 18 damage with the cards. That seems really strong. I think I'm gonna take this. This card is very interesting though. But I think this is what we're doing right now. Can only be used on turns in which an attack card is not used. Gain eight block. You cannot use attack cards this turn. So. So how does this interact with artillery? So can I, can I motorcycle cover and then pick up artillery cards and then the artillery cards go for free that's like 
interesting if that's how that works. No exhaust, so it'll end up clogging your deck. That is fair. So this really needs to be mitigated with the, like, card draw stuff. I'm gonna pick this one, because it's very build around y Has the reminder, uh, sorry, not reminder text, but variable text at the bottom. Cool. Well, what? What the fuck is this? This card was never used during this combat. Cost is permanently reduced by one. Or if it was used, cost becomes three the next combat. <laughs> what? <laughs> so what? This is a card you like discard to organize, and then, and then you use it later. It's so weird. It's such a weird card. Uh, very slow wind up punch. It's like. I, I think the idea of this card is cute. Yeah, because the idea, I guess, is you, like, you can discard it and then just, like, not use it for a number of fights and then go, like, blam, and then and then punch them. But I, I don't know if I would ever pick it. It's a weird card. It does look like she's punching Knob. So maybe the idea is that this character struggles with Knob, so... She needs to wind up a lucky punch to, to punch Knob. This feels like the light beam of this character. Where it's like, I don't want to pick this card. This card seems bad, but also... I guess I understand why it's there. Okay, deal 7 damage if the enemy was weak, apply to vulnerable. If enemy was vulnerable, apply to weak. Huh? So they need to already be weak or vulnerable, and then it applies two of the other one. Seems kind of hard. I don't. I don't know what this interacts with. Maybe one of the parallel goods is like does stuff. Deal eleven damage if transformed or removed from your deck. Add a random friend card to your deck. What the? What the fuck are all of these? The holy hand grenade. <laughs> Okay, deal 11 damage. If transformed or removed from your deck, add a random friend card to your deck. What is the... So, you're supposed to draft it and then sell it? Is that the point? What? Why do we pick the thin anime waifus? Where are the muscle mommies or the muscle dudes? I... I don't know what to tell you. I don't... I don't, I don't think... I wanted to see... If there were other... I, I don't... I don't know if there are any fitting your description, unfortunately. I think they're just all cute girl mods. <laughs> I don't I don't have to tell you. Uh Yeah, so like you can definitely draft one one mana do something. I'm kind of curious why it interacts with selling it. Do I pick up Grave? I guess it doesn't really do anything. I 
We're gonna we're gonna avoid calling it that in, in my chat, I think. <laughs> we're you know. Hmm. I guess I can keep waiting on on rune construction. I guess oh, you know what's interesting about this is that I just assumed that this card exhausted, which it doesn't. I guess we can just play it. Because I was going to say, if that card exhausted, then there would be an issue with... Uh, there would be an issue with wanting to, like, keep it for a very long time so you can actually use it to, to good effect. Okay, but that card is called Funny Friend Fantasy. So that one is definitely cute and funny. Sure. I'll let you have it. Oh, this is a multi-hit card, so we need to play it right now. What the... What the fuck... What? To what? Huh? 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 What? <laughs> I guess we we haven't ran into the the Perero shop, so I guess we'll. Deal 17 damage. If fatal, add grave to one card in your deck after combat. Why? Wait, why? To one card in your deck. What? Why? On. So you can change the card that you start with, but normally the 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 fatal cards are supposed to be stacking. So is the point to, like, grave a bunch of your cards? Oh, you could grave all of your strikes and then just not draw them on your first reshuffle. That's so weird. That's a very interesting card. I don't really know how I would use it, but it's neat. I guess we already picked a grave card, but if we didn't pick a grave card, then we could, like, for example, we could just grave, like, three strikes... I guess that would make our collect really awkward, but yeah, I don't know. The, the collector payoff card seems pretty simple and good. Um, <laughs> all right, he he is gonna 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 smoke the peace pipe, I suppose. <laughs> we'll start removing some cards. Uh. Okay. I was really hoping we would draw the goods card, because that'd be quite good there. We want to collect thing. Hug me. Deal four damage at the start of each enemy turn. Deal four damage. Huh? So so when they take their action, you deal four damage? What is the... What is the point of this card? <laughs> what is this card? <laughs> is this... Is this supposed to be AoE? <laughs> this is this an AoE card? Where you're like, Look, it's the slime combat! Hug me! It's cute. Now you just need Giria for bonfires to be the absolute... <laughs> Yeah, for bonfires to just be super clearly amazing good. Apply weak equal to unblocked damage. Shot. What the fuck? What? 
That's cool. That was a cool idea. That's kind of cool. It's a uh, god. It's like a clothesline effect, right? Clothesline is weak, right? But you need to deal damage first. See, you know what's really interesting about these cards? I guess I can mention. Th these cards are really cool because, <clears throat> like, this card isn't, like, super, I, I, I guess, focused on what the character is doing. Ah, plus three damage. I guess I, applying six weak seems really good for a common, so I will I will say that. But um, the thing that's cool about these cards is that yeah, this is a bit much. But the thing that's cool about these cards is that like characters probably want to have some kind of way to apply weak. You know what I mean? Like having a way to apply weak at common is like good. Like, that's a tool that characters probably need in order to, like, function, right? And then you can kind of play around with, like, how much weak you want to apply. Like, maybe this card could have been two to three. Three to four also seems completely reasonable, right? Um, but yeah, like, this is, this is just a card where it's like, okay, we kind of want to give them access to having a weak effect at common and then you can even consider stuff where it's like okay well we don't want to give this character a weakened effect at common like we're just not going to do that we're not going to give them the ability to do that so that there's more of a restriction around when this character gets weakened effects so like maybe we'll put it at uncommon only right uh so totally fair for um for this card to exist three to six is probably a bit much as you were mentioning but uh, this card's really cool because it's the, it's kind of like, this is just something you choose whether or not a character has. I would evaluate that three weak for like, if you can get three weak on something, that seems exceptionally strong. Um, but it's kind of got that mini game to it where you're like, you have to do the damage first and then you get three weak. Um, so reasonable. It's like slightly, it, it doesn't do any damage in comparison to something like clothesline, but, uh, it's cool. <clears throat> the one time having a stack up of one would have made sense. Yeah, I, I agree. Hell, hell divers when, uh, I don't think we have time in the schedule to play Helldivers. Because <laughs> uh, we're going to be starting three houses, and then that's going to be our concurrent playthrough. And then that's going to take up a lot of time. It also means I don't have to buy Helldivers. <laughs> uh, uh, Sorry, I was just observing my smiling half open face and realizing it it looks a little weird, but don't don't look at it too long. <laughs> uh Flar isn't cool enough or American enough to play Helldivers. Man is too busy fighting to get Lee to fight for democracy. What the fuck? Come on. Come on. Come on. The art for the whole mod is obviously amateurish, but it's charming. Yeah, I was going to say the other thing, too, is I I can't help but feel like the reason they drew it this way is for it to be like... I, I feel like they drew it this way on purpose, you know what I mean? Like, they drew everything in paint on purpose, but I can't tell. I don't know. At the very least, the cards appear to be recognizable wallet issues kind of but i don't think it's a wallet issue it's more of like a wallet acknowledgement <laughs> uh don't worry one of these days i'll have a i'll have a stable tactician job and then i i'm going to throw all of my money at stream <laughs> you don't understand 
You don't under- you literally have no idea. You have no idea how much money I would be wasting and throwing at my streaming hobby if I had it. <laughs> A wall- waldage mint? Yeah, basically. Chilling with learning talk in the background is a good afternoon. Well, I'm glad it's a good afternoon for you, Kratos. Yeah. Uh, this one has been interesting so far. I feel like I don't want to dawdle too much because I kind of want to, like, keep playing it. See if there's any cool things we can do. Shuffle the cards from your discard pile that do not have grave and buried into your draw pile. Collect one. See, this is really interesting. This is, again, one of those, like, this is a generic card, but this one is more archetypal. So this makes sure to clear all of your non-buried cards out of your out of your uh, discard before you cantrip, which is really cool. Big fan of that. Uh, these are all good cards. I'm going to take the cantrip. My turn's great. Can we fight an elite? I don't know. But we're gonna try. Uh, that's currently picking up slow starter. Yeah, I feel feel bad for having the slow starter now. It's not as not quite as good as I thought it would be. What we could do though is we could tea time first and then collect a landmine. We are probably doing this though. Beep. Oh, I guess organized gives us block. I keep forgetting that. I'll just pass. Hi, it's me, your only viewer. Over the years, I created the illusion that a lot of people were watching you, but that was me. Now I'll write this message from all of my accounts. Oh no, not not from all of your accounts. Not, oh my goodness, no one was real the entire time? Oh god. No, the all of my everything was, was gaslit into existence. It's true, yeah, you know what? I really appreciate that, boy. You want to know how I can tell that it's, it's all the same person, actually, is, um... Uh, is, is, is actually <laughs> the horror. Oh, no. Oh, I had one viewer the entire time. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I, here, here's the problem. You know what's, you know what's really funny about, like, you know, that, like, it's, it's like the classic copy pasta, right? You, you, you know what's like funny about that copy pasta? I think specifically in relation to my chat is that everyone in my chat is too unique to possibly be like a gaslight, you know, of being the same person. Like, I can't picture Poi being any other person. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> It would be impossible for anyone else in my chat to be Poi. Uh, it would also probably be impossible for anyone else in my chat to be Kreos. Because Kreos is so goddamn wholesome. All the time, somehow. Like, I don't understand. Rue is, Rue is way too down bad to possibly be any other person. Um, and Cesar... Listen, I... <laughs> I appreciate that Cesar sticks around, but half the time I have no fucking idea what he's saying. Um, and that's, but that's fine. Like, it's not, it's okay. That's, it's not a problem. Like, it's fine. <laughs> but it's just so funny because I feel like, I feel like chat a lot of the time has like a tendency to just be like one brain cell, like literally all the same brain cell. But the problem with my chat is that each individual person has a single brain cell. Uh, and that's like a little different. <laughs> I, I don't think there's anything unifying in my chat ever, except for calling me flat and bullying me. 
I don't, I don't think there's anything else. Oh, man. You're a cute girl. I want to look like you in real life. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Um, I, I, I apologize. I, I was lying to you, but I, I actually have a massive flagpole. So please be aware that, you know, if you look underneath the skirt, you might, you might be surprised at what you find. But I am a flag bearer, so the so please be aware that my flagpole is very big, um, like massive, you could say. Um, I just wanted to like make the expectation clear, so you know, just just be just be careful. Not not many people are as skilled in handling flagpoles as I am. You're cosplaying Saber, yes, that's correct. I, this is it's all a Saber cosplay. But Flares, you are flat, but that's okay because flat is just... Oh boy. And short. Don't forget short. That's correct. <clears throat> is that bad or good? Sorry, was that in relation to, to me not understanding what you're saying? I... I do my best. I do my best to understand what you're saying, Cesar. But sometimes I don't. And that makes me feel bad, because I want to understand what you're saying. Oh my god, it's the cat! <laughs> Also, it has grave. I wonder what the order of grave is. Is it in like selection order or in draft order? I I hope when you pick a new grave card, that's the one that takes precedent. Humongous flagpole. Bye 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 bye. <laughs> guys, guys, the the streamer has a flagpole. Bye. I was actually just watching parrot videos last night. And I was, I was losing brain cells. <laughs> uh, I assume random. Hope it, hope it has a defined order. Yeah, I kind of want to take another grave card just to see. Gain seven block when used or collected. Oh, that's interesting. So you can like discard it, but then you get block when you collect it. That's like cool. It's a, a collect payoff. Additional attacks equal to the number of chain explosions in your discard pile. Oh, so this is the, uh, this is their, uh, the ca their claw card. Deal 12 damage, add one imitation, uh, into your discard. I don't know what the purpose of this is. They're, I w I'm assuming they're just statuses that don't have collectible. Okay, let's see. Oh, this one had grave, right? Yeah. Let's see how it works. Ah, that's actually a little unfortunate. I think it's... Yeah, so it's in order of, like, how you drafted it. It's their accumulated knowledge, or more specifically, the red one that I don't remember the name of. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Wait. Wait, is there an accumulated knowledge for every color in magic? Because I didn't know that. <laughs> I actually didn't know that. Oh, right, it could still be... Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair. So we'll check next time. It was a cycle? Oh. I've definitely only ever seen accumulated knowledge, and that's because I played Legacy. How can you be so sure that I'm not another person? Uh, just doesn't feel like it. Technically, I can't be sure. I mean, if there was one person who who made a bunch of accounts and then subbed to me for like 12 months, I mean, I'd be flattered. But, you know. Uh, oh. I don't have the the wave cushion, so I can't tea time for stuff. Accumulated knowledge? Something I don't have. I'm so sorry, Cooler. Feels bad, man. 
It's it's okay. I I barely have any accumulated knowledge myself. I just have a bunch of random trash in my brain. Green has a pump spell and red has a two mana shock. I don't remember the rest. Hmm. I see. Take some water. Oh, ow. <sighs> uh, Parrot got a huge success making uh, the VT videos. At least it's not like five years ago where uh, when if you did those videos, 4chan will dox and hunt you down for being a tourist guy. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Start each combat with uh, temporary HP equal to the number of grave cards. Oh, that's cool. What the fuck is this? Uncollectible for gain energy for every four cards in your discard pile. Oh, this is uh, the energy card. The isn't there a no stack gives you block, but this gives you. That's, this is really interesting for this character specifically because you can build a discard pile. I think we're not going to take it because we have the exhaust card, but this would be very interesting to me if you had, like, Minefield and then you didn't play, like, Rune Construction. You just, like, made a bunch of energy. That's cool. How are you able to be flatter? What? What was that in relation to? How dare you? Uh, wait, you have knowledge? Some people here have privileges? What? Oh, privilege like with knowledge? This card has been collected this turn. Select parallel goods and use its effect. Oh, that's cool. So this gives us this, like, the effect of all of the things. Um but only if you collected it. You'd be flat... Oh, my God. <laughs> no. I would be flat heard. As in, like, I would appreciate it and be like, wow, you didn't have to do that. Not like I would be more flat. Do you see this? I don't think it's possible for me to be more flat. Let me wait. Hold on a second. This is a perfect time to bring this up. Pause. Wait. There was a. Let me see. Man, I had this good image. It's on my. Um... <laughs> it's, it's on my laptop. And that's the problem, is I saved it on my laptop, but it's just a manga panel of, like, of, like, like a flat girl crying and being, like, there's so little chest there that it literally hangs off my chest because there's nothing there. There's really nothing there. And she's just, like, crying. <laughs> the panel is so good, though. It's so funny. <laughs> and I wanted to link it, but I, I can't find it because it is on my other computer. I've been meaning to like send it to myself over Discord or something so I could just like post it, but it's I don't have it, which makes me really sad. <clears throat> but anyways, already flat enough, bro. You cannot get any flatter than that. Also, first of all, I would like to mention that I could potentially be flatter. Like, if I turn this way, like, if I turn to the side, you can see that that it, it's possible. You know, it's possible. It's definitely possible. I guess, you know what? There we go. Now it's, now it's a blue archive stream. Truly a blue archive stream of all time. Visualize the man you want to be. For. Be? 
I'm supposed to. It's supposed to be a comma there. Flower wants to be a flat girl. <laughs> I just figured that it was appropriate. It was appropriate contextually to thing. Oh wait, does this work? Yo, we popped off. What the fuck? Yo, we go crazy. Deal five damage five times. Deals additional damage equal to the number of other friend cards in your deck. Un unfortunately, this card is not good. <laughs> no. I don't have any friends, guys. This doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> oh shit. This mod's kind of cooking. It's got some good ideas in it, I think. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I want to do this. Oh, their their aggression is so much lower than normal. doesn't do anything so I picked up slow starter oh, and then picking up wave cushion doesn't do anything okay How have you been I feel kind of off today um I don't know I feel weird today I'm actually kind of glad that this this mod doesn't suck <laughs> Because I was, I was kind of concerned that I was just going to be screaming. Apparently I was misremembering. Accumulated knowledge was not part of a cycle I was thinking of. But there is a cycle like that from Odyssey. Uh, but accumulated knowledge is from Nemesis, I see. Kind of goofy? Uh, sure, let's go with that. <laughs> the Mass Swimsuit Gang is the most vicious gang in the South Side. I don't mess with them, bro. What? What? Is that... Is that what this is? <laughs> is this is this a meme? Sorry, I don't actually play Blue Archive. It's actually the the one thing that I've been like, oh man, you know, I don't think that it would be possible for me to to ever interact with this thing, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's 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 very funny is this a real thing this is <laughs> that's v very interesting okay <laughs> just oh wick sauce interesting I was like do they have a do they have a freaking Weiss thing that I didn't know about Interesting. I don't play Blue Archive either. I just think Master and Suit Gang is funny. <laughs> well, I I wasn't sure if it was like a if it was a Blue Archive meme that maybe it could be like oh now I understand the meme. I'm gonna get rid of this. This card does not seem very good. I can make a donation for Fire Emblem Three Houses and pick your next waifu. Okay, we're gonna have to put. We're, we're gonna have to put actual, like, like, restrictions on it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna have to, like, I have to think of something first. I'm still thinking about the systems. Did you just say Wixos by pronouncing the X? Yeah. It's Wixos. Don't you know Wixos? The, like, the game Wixos? Like, from the card game, Wixos. <laughs> Brother, uh, what is that? What is what? You don't like your wives? <laughs> First of all, to be completely clear, yes. Yes, when Chad picks my wife, I get very concerned. Because Chad's gonna be like, Hey, Flaris, did you wanna, did you wanna, did you wanna get married to someone who can suplex you? And it's like, no. 
No, I don't actually. Did you did, did you ever think about that? Did you think maybe maybe I don't want to be suplexed? I don't want to get picked up and then pushed into a wall. <laughs> That's not I'm not into that. We can pick the wife. Uh, we haven't started three houses yet. Please please think before you do things. That's all I'm going to say. It's We Cross. I always thought it was We Cross, but now I'm convinced it's Wick, wick Sauce. Hey, everybody. Wick Sauce, wick sauce here. Did you know that? Did you know that CPT, otherwise known as Cognitive Behavior Therapy? Uh bro I would kill to be married to someone who can suplex me? Oh my god. Listen, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i really sorry. I, you know, I, I don't like being suplexed. I don't like being, I don't like being yeeted. I'm 5'1". Please don't eat me. 5'1 is actually very tall, if you think about it. The average height if the average height of people is like four four eight, but you're so based. Uh oh shit, that I picked up the wrong one. Whoops. It's okay. Our our organized gives us a lot of stuff now, which I'm very excited about. What the chair? What do you mean cuck behavioral therapy? What the fuck? I love the kind of woman who can actually just kill me. Like I'm talking splatter my brains. Like I like I want us to be completely different people afterwards. <laughs> See, the thing this is the difference, right? Is that I I agree with that, but I only agree to the extent that, you know, I, you know, I, I don't want them to be built like a refrigerator. <laughs> they can do all of those things, but I don't necessarily want them to be a walking refrigerator. Not that there's anything wrong with that, for the record. Like, you know, take care of your body and stuff. Body positivity. However... I, I find it difficult to be attracted to walking refrigerators. I apologize. For having bad taste, I suppose. So Flora agrees if it's a feminine man. <laughs> yes. Okay. And what and, and what about it? What about it, Rue? If it, maybe maybe, you know. Maybe I'm just so starved for affection that I just, I just want, I just want a, a Menhara Yandere girlfriend. <laughs> I want my girl to be built like a brick shit house. That's fair, honestly. Totally fair. Totally agree. Totally reasonable. Base not gonna lie. Just say the number will do it. Oh my god. Yeah, like, respectable. Completely reasonable. You just want all the generic waifus? What if I do? What's wrong with that? So based. So fucking based. Uh, I feel like we're gonna have difficulty killing this boss. Do you think we're going to be able to kill this boss? Because I actually don't think we'll be able to kill this boss. Is this 12? That's 14. 26? I die? I literally just die here.
That's crazy. <laughs> Bro, you can't show that on YouTube. What the fuck, mod creator? You can't you can't just be can't just be doing that. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. <laughs> Uh, what do I want to do? What is this? It's going to be exchanged for two random common Pororo goods at the Pororo shop. Cannot be upgraded. So am I supposed to be going to the shop? Is the shop actually the Pororo shop? Is that how this works? I guess there's like an understandability thing where I don't I don't know what the I don't know what that means. I don't know what the Pororo shop is. How do I do that? Where do I go to do that? It's a two pole, nice. Wonder if Nagisa will come and help you? Okay, who's that? I guess I need to like eventually play this game, but it's unfortunately a... It's a... Uh... Oh, this girl's cute. I was gonna say, whoa, she's an angel! And then it's like, guys, it's literally Blue Archive. That's... They're all angels. That's literally how it works. <laughs> uh... Not all of them? Are they not all angels? I thought they're all angels. Is that not how it works? Hold on a second. We need to we need to make the stream slightly more blue archive. Okay, there we go. There you go. You're you're welcome. Is this character from something? This character is from Blue Archive. This is Hifumi from Blue Archive. Only some schools? Oh. I just assumed that they were all angels. Actually, I got a question. Why the fuck does the angel have a goddamn sniper rifle? What do you mean? They're they're all angels that have guns. What's the problem with that? Trinity, which is a school that consists of a lot of like angels. Je Jehenna? Gehenna? Gehenha? Which are demons? Oh, is that what... That's what Hina is, right? Because doesn't she, like... Yeah, she has, like, horns or something instead of angel wings. Okay, I understand. Downloading Blue Archive now. They have guns? Yes, it's an... It's an auto-battler. That is the... I believe that is the point. <laughs> not no not that game no please automatic zero this game destroyed my bank account what the fuck oh my god yes Nikkei's also have guns increase it stack by one for this combat use the effect okay uh, I thought this one was probably good is it Ge Gehenha or Gehenna? Because the second one is a real thing, so I'd assume that's what it's named. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Gehenna Academy is apparently what it's called. It does not have another H in it. It is Gehenna. I mistyped. Understandable. You preferred Nikkei? I mean, listen. We've we've talked about Nikkei on the stream. Is this is this the image? Oh my god! Wait. I don't remember if I, I... I don't remember how I cropped this image. 
Okay, all right. Okay, we're just gonna... <laughs> so I... <laughs> we were talking about... We were talking about Nikkei. Um... Because they had... Because they... Because they had this. Um... We were we were simply discussing that this is a very interesting. This, this is cool. I'm glad. Yes, AK did a good job uh, on this one. I'm, I'm very proud of them. I apologize to the mod creator. For being so down bad this stream. Uh, this is an interesting one. I kind of want to take this one. Airtight story. Shuffle up the three cards from your discard into your drop pile. Gate block. Oh, I got another card to turn. Oh, this is interesting. This is a way to manipulate buried cards. I'm going to take this card. But do they have a 100 kilogram <laughs> I... Guys, we can we can roll for the things. How do I this plus this is this one? What the fuck is this? How does this work? Okay, when using deal 12 damage to a random enemy. Beats this relic's damage by six. When using draw three plus one per stack. When using game vlog. Wow, this this sure is something. <laughs> this sure this sure is something. But yeah, much like Arc Knights wailed for one character, this case Wakamo. She looks so cool, then lost interest in the game after a couple of weeks. That's unfortunate, my friend. That that's you know sometimes how how it goes in gacha games. But yeah, Wakamo is the like the yandere. Yeah, my my friend was telling me about this character. Uh, <laughs> my my friend sure explained this character to me. Oh, I pulled. Oh, it did all of it at the same time. Oh. Okay, so I can combine the mitts and this into. A Pororosaurus? Do I want to do that? Or do I want to make a... Make a cushion? I don't... I don't know how I want to do it. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's play this one. Do we want to combine it into anything? Deal 12 damage to a random enemy. When using, summon an ally who gains 6 block at the end of each turn. If you already have an ally with the same number, the stack increases by one. What the fuck? I... I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> We're gonna leave it as it is. Prorosaurus, write that thing. Oh. Uh, yeah, it... It sure is a thing. I just love her mask. Legit a sucker for the fox aesthetic. Was that why you were okay with... With Poi adding Dinah to my... To my marriage list? Is that... Is that correct? Is that the case? Uh... Boop. Wait, what? Oh! Oh, I choose which one. Oh, that's... Okay, I understand now. Okay, 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 okay. This all makes sense to me now. I understand. I'm gonna be honest, for some reason, I thought it just triggered all of them. 
but now I know. Okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. So now we have options. So now we can do whatever we think is good. That's cool. I will not deny or approve. Ten dollars for Manuela from Three Houses. Who is this one? Oh my god. What the fuck is this? Winter Manuela? Fire Emblem here. Bro, what the fuck? Hello? What the hell? Man, gotcha games are wilding, dude. What the fuck? What the hell? This has got to be the most distracted design to Spire I've ever done. Uh... Okay, don't click on any of these other ones, because that would not be smart. Bro, what is what is happening with this? What is this? Bro, are they okay over there? Like, are they good? Man. <laughs> like, are they good? What are they doing over in, in frickin' Fire Emblem Heroes, bro? What the hell? Oh, she has like a deer tail. So it's like a it's like a bunny girl outfit, but she's a deer. <laughs> kind of unfortunate that it's been so distracted, Animal, because the mod seems really cool. Yeah, I, I I agree. I also wish I could be more focused today. <clears throat> Oh, she's... she's cute. She aight. Hear me out? What am I hearing you out on? Okay, so we want to upgrade our... We need to go to a shop again. I'm realizing that the shop is very important. Block three, collect one. Upgrade the collected cards. Now that's kind of neat. Oh, yeah, so this is like... This is, uh, god, what's it called? It's armaments, but it's also their backflip copy, which is why it blocks for so little. That's cool, this one. Add a pounder to your hand. The damage and block of artillery cards increased by two during this combat. You can just keep doing that? Blarmaments? Yeah. <laughs> Seems really good. I feel like there is a concern. I I am concerned. Are you need to write your strategist CV to add and I know that the people crave and that I know what people crave and that it's softcore porn on your next gotcha project. I I I mean, you know, we already discussed this at the time. Oh, that's a skill. Oh shit, that's probably not good. Um, I keep forgetting we're on Ascension One. I keep, I keep being like, man, I am so dead, and then I'm not dead because it's, because it's Ascension One. Instant hire. You know what's actually really funny about that? I wanted to, to mention this. Supposedly... Supposedly, investors are actually, like, not stupid. I know, like, I don't know if that makes sense to people, but supposedly when you're pitching, if your entire pitch is like, guys, we're going to make the next gotcha game where you pull for waifus, it's like, no one cares. <laughs> you can't just be like, guys... We're going to do Super Mario, but again, like, you know what I mean? 
So either, you know, I'm assuming, you know, like the pitch for something like Blue Archive is like, we're going to have angel girls and all of them have guns. It's just like, okay, on board, hired, project is funded, go. But if you go like, we're going to make a gotcha game and we're going to charge people to pull on the gotcha and it's going to make money. It's like, no one cares. <laughs> it's like, wow, you put it together. You really put, you really put the, you really put your game design together to, to, you know. <laughs> No, you know what the interesting thing is? That Nikkei's pitch was probably... Was probably... Okay. So gotcha game players are horny. You know what we can do? Is that all the other gotcha games aren't turning their horny meter up to like 150. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our horny meter up... Horny meter up to 150. And that was Nikkei's pitch. You need a plan and an actual selling point. I'd assume if there's one thing investors want, it's anything to stand out and have a competitive advantage. Yeah, exactly. Nikkei being like, make the porn part of the gameplay. <laughs> Guys, we need to be able to play Nikkei with one hand. <laughs> oh boy. Add two pounders to your hand. Holy shit. Wait, add two pounder pluses. What the fuck? Wait, this card upgrades from dealing 12 damage to dealing 18, 24 damage. Does one mana deal 24 damage? What the fuck? Oh, sorry. I saw the two in gold and I thought it was a... Yeah, okay, my apologies. I was freaking out for a second. It's fine. It is not broken. We've confirmed that it only upgrades by three. I was really confused. Friend Artillery. Uncollectible. Deal 11 damage. This card's artillery effect also activates in your discard. What? You just deal 11 damage every turn? What? That's so cool. So it just sits there and shoots? Wild. Yeah, you know what this synergizes with? Is all the cards that put cards back in your deck. So like if we had two airtight storages, then we could just never redraw the thing. Yeah, it also has it also has a marker, so we know. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good good indicators. Bonk. And we're going to pass the turn again. Bonk. That's awesome. Okay, so we need ways to make it so we don't reshuffle our deck. Shoot up the one card from your discard pile and put it on the bottom. The card placed on the bottom is collected first. Oh! That's kind of cute. So you can choose what's what you collect. Oh, wait, no. This is... Oh, this is their backflip card. So deal. Oh, no, it's not. God, I'm so dumb. So this does damage. This is their their deal damage and draw card card. Which I guess it does more damage because collect is. Well, the thing is, collect is always active. Does uh, does the ironclad draw card go to 12? Almost right goes to no it's nine to ten so i guess because it doesn't draw from your deck it's slightly stronger oh it goes draw to right yeah so this only upgrades the damage because i guess collect two doesn't necessarily huh interesting It's a good target for the rare that grades your card. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this one. 
We could we could grave it at the very start and then just have it active. Oh, did my Akabeko never go off because it was all skills? Is that a is that an actual factual fucking siege tank from from StarCraft? They just like raw put a siege tank here. That's like that's what they did. <laughs> that's so funny. So you do it once, and then it and then it has artillery for the for the rest of the thing. That's kind of cool. Also helps with the reshuffle cards. So this is one we want to reshuffle. Okay, let's do that one. Oh my god, that's so gas. Wait, this is so gas. And then we're going to pick it up. And then we can leave it in our hand. And it's going to go... Yo! That's so cool. Okay, so this is kind of interesting because, like, so this is what I'm thinking, right? <clears throat> is that what this what this mod is doing is that it has a unique way of drawing cards, which is collecting, right? So, like, collect is kind of draw, but it, like, lets you reuse stuff or put particular cards into your hand. So your discard matters, basically. Now, the cool thing is that, like, you think, oh, what verbs overlap with that, right? So cards which do something different the second time you use them, like that, that works, right? Now, collect is a little weird because you draw from the bottom of your discard. So, like, you don't have the most control. But if you can get the synergy off, it's pretty strong. Uh, additionally, there's a problem with drawing cards, right? Which is that, like, you don't have the energy to play all of the cards, basically. So usually when you draw cards, like a, a character like Defect, for example, is able to produce a lot of energy uh, so they can draw a lot of cards and then produce energy and then play those cards. Whereas someone like Silent, for example, has a lot of, like, low-cost cards. So you can, like, you know, manipulate, discard cards, and draw cards to play specific cards. Or play a lot of low-costing cards. Whereas what this thing is doing is, like, wow, Siege Mode has artillery. So if you get the, the wombo combo of playing this and putting it back in your hand, then... You don't need to pay the cost again to play it again. So it, I guess what I'm trying to point to is just that like, there's a specific way you need to utilize this energy. That's like the gameplay. And the payoff for the gameplay is an interesting circumvention of what normally happens when you draw too many cards, right? Normally when you draw too many cards, you don't have the energy to play, to play them, but they're telling you, like, interact with this mini game of, like, collecting and stuff, and then your artillery will play automatically, uh, which I think is very interesting. It's got a good, got a good feel to it. Bonk. I guess the thing that I was concerned about, like, from an actual, like, balance perspective is is the how do I say it being able to draw a card and have it automatically do damage is kind of good like that's that's actually fairly strong so I don't know like collect only picks up certain cards so I don't know if the Right? 
this is what I was saying when I'm when I said I was tired, but like, you know, is it a problem? I guess. Like, do you do too much damage? I guess. Because there's also the downside that an artillery card is something that you don't necessarily want to play. And then also that card which generates artillery cards has, like, could potentially put too many things in your hand. Or, or in your deck, sorry. So it's like anger, where, like, you, you, you end up having too many cards. There's a collect pop-up. I didn't notice that until now. Big fan of the indicators in this mod. Yeah, they do a they do a good job of actually having symbols and stuff, which is great. They're also in places where you assume they would be. So like the collect pop-up shows up where your discard is. Uh, well, we obviously haven't seen what the good system does at later levels. It's interesting, at least, and looks fine enough. Yeah, it's kind of like. The gold investment did seem to be in line with, like, other relics, I suppose. And it doesn't seem like the metascaling on this is too broken. Right? Like, this does, I believe, 10 damage, and then it's plus 3 per stack. So it's kind of like, would you pay 150 gold to get plus 3 strength on one card in your deck? Right? Like, that's kind of reasonable. You know, it's not like plus 10 strength to every card that interacts with this system. Or like, and then you have multiple cards which interact with this system, you know what I mean? So. Since some of the cards want to stay in the discard pile, it's cool that the card draw doesn't accelerate you towards reshuffle. I didn't even think about that. You can also pay 75 to roll for a common. Yeah, sorry. I actually didn't even think about that at all. Yeah, so the card draw... Yeah, the card draw doesn't draw from your deck. So that helps synergize with, like, the the rare that we have. I, I felt like there were other cards which also you don't really want to, like, draw them. Like, you want to wait on them. Or, like, you don't want to reshuffle yet, so... Oh. Born two times. Retain. That's kind of cool. That's a really cool upgrade. Because these are choice selects. So if you want to keep it in your hand for like an opportune time, you can also keep it in your hand so that it's the first card in your discard if you don't have any other buried cards, so that's really cool. It's incredibly high in flexibility. Yeah. But the thing is, like, the effects aren't broken. You know what I mean? Like, this is just, like, a cool card to play. And this, this does something that, like, I really appreciate, which is that the base deck cards matter. <laughs> right? Sometimes you can look at the base deck cards and be like, eh, I don't know. Like, is this... Is this what we want to be doing like i can't tell or like in the free run mod i know that it was probably just a like a basic coding error but like oh we can just draft one of those like it just but this is this is the unique effect that is that's just in the base deck and you want to play it a lot also as i was explaining like oh what is what is Hifumi's personality? Um, Pararo good. Me buy all the Pararo merch. Very good. I like this one. <laughs> so, I liked how the base deck initially, like, lets you do this, kind of. Where if you draw this as your first card, or in your first hand, you play it. If you draw both of these, then you play both of them. Or, if that doesn't happen, then that's too bad. But you're kind of hoping to draw this one first so that you can play it again, probably, because it'll be slightly stronger than your other cards in your deck. 
It's very cool. All right. So now that I know how the thing works, I want to do this. And then I need a mittens. So let's gamba. Fuck. Gamba. Fuck. <laughs> I guess we can get one of these. Six block at the end of each turn. If you already have an ally with the same name, stack increases by one. So I don't exactly know how this works, but we'll, f we'll find out. It's perhaps a bit unfortunate that the whole good system just supports the, this one card, but hey, maybe there are other goods cards at Uncommon or Higher. Yeah, there might be. There was a goods potion. I know that there was that, at least. Uh, holy shit. Wait, that was the first card we played, right? Oh, hell yeah. Let's, uh... Oh, we don't... Oh, no. We don't have a collect. It'd be so good here. Um... Hey, what do I want to do? This one? What does this do? Fucking incredible, dude. Amazing. I need to check the source code for this so that I can... I might be able to use this to spawn a flag. Um, that's incredible. I love that. such a gotcha game i can't wait for all in hifumi where she she's edgy and turns into a funko pop <laughs> artillery yeah very satisfying what the hell is this when playable retain buried <clears throat> When you use an attack card, it increases damage by 5 and then discard this card. Add a flame trace to your hand. So this doesn't say gain 5 temporary strength. It's only... It's like a, an Akabeko effect. Whenever you collect this card, add a copy of it to your hand. Deal 9 damage. That's kind of funny. Uh, what if I just, like, had a bunch of siege modes? We're also looking for, like, a collect card. A collect card would be nice. to get whacked. Uh... Oh my god, I just realized. Sorry, no, I knew that that's what this did, but I was like, oh, I can like really manipulate what the bottom card is. I'm probably going to download this mod and give it a whirl on my own time. It looks really interesting. Yeah. It's definitely cool. It's got cool stuff going on. Uh, and none of it seems, like, egregious, I guess. Like, there's usually a concern, for example. Like, they made an entire other system. And then you're, like, kind of scared if that's going to be broken or not. Um, it doesn't feel broken. Nothing looks conspicuously broken. We have an opportunity to do this. 
put the thing back in our hand. about this because this this seems rather strong gain six block every turn At the end of your turn like non-conditional that's a bit of why i want to do it i want to see whether the system breaks under any real pressure because it looks sound enough yeah it's like gaining six block every turn like with almost no condition seems rather strong i don't i wonder when this would go away because something like plated armor has like a downside, like it can go away. And then some of the things which involve summoning creatures or having like an additional thing here, usually it's like a represented as temporary HP or something like that. So like do I just do I just have six uh not plated armor, but metallicize basically? Do I just have that now? That seems pretty good. Let's or get organized, and then let's pick up our siege mode. Damn. I mean, like, this seems really strong. Just, like, collecting and putting artillery in your hand, and then getting blocked? Like, that seems pretty good. Do damage. Metallicize is weaker and not as flexible. Yeah. So I guess there's, like, some stuff like that where you you might ask the question, like... Like, does this need to be six block? The thing is, like... This is kind of... Like, you could look at the gold cost, I suppose. Because this is two of the common relics, which is basically 300 gold. So it's like, is it okay to like, pay 300 gold to have a relic that says one card in your deck gives you, like, six block every turn? Like, like that's a little hard to have, like, a an actual answer to without looking at it very closely. It's kind of my opinion on that. Hmm. But yeah, the passive damage seems cool. That's another thing that I would want to, like, look at and be like, if we put this through, like, some kind of, uh, not simulation, like, if we tried to make a model, like, a, a data model of this deck, like, how much damage does it do? I guess we could try doing some napkin math, but it doesn't seem like we're doing too much damage. We're on, like, turn 10 right now. Oh, it's blocked by the banner, so I guess there's that. But we're on turn 10, so... You know. Choose a card to discard. Also, just playing around with buried and artillery synergies looks really cool. Yeah, so here we, like, don't need to play anything. Yeah, so this is the interesting thing that I was talking about before, where it's, like, the weird thing about artillery is that if we don't have anything to spend our mana on, which we probably will, but assuming we don't have anything to spend our mana on, it's just kind of, like, awkward that you draw the cards and then don't really want to play them because...
Okay, ordinary. Retain. Select up to five cards from your discard pile and make them uncollectible and buried. What? So, this is effectively exhaust five without removing your discard pile? I guess? Because what else do you do? So that. I guess it says retain. Festival gotcha. Copy all cards in your discard pile. <laughs> what the fuck? So I guess this is. This is like pick up all of your artillery cards in your discard pile and also clog the shit out of your deck. <laughs> I guess the the point of this card is that you would you would play it at an opportune time instead of you know copying a bunch of strikes for example. This card has play to it. I'd assume the copy stay in your discard. Mmm. Okay. I assume they put it in your hand like you would add the copies to your hand. I'm not sure, so... But... Yeah, I think it would make sense to put it in your discard. Retain. It synergizes with stuff you want to stay in your discard or to power up the buried synergies. Well, the uncollectible... Like, buried is something you want to pick up with collect. But if it's uncollectible, then it's just gone forever. This is effectively like exhaust them. But they have to be in your discard pile. Add five Pororo the Forbidden One cards into your discard pile. Whenever you draw a Forbidden card, gain eight block. What the fuck? If you have all Forbidden cards, exhaust them all, then deal 50 damage to all enemies and draw five cards. So ridiculous. Uh, but they're uncollectible. I can't collect them. Why, why can't I collect them? I want to collect them. And they, it's so weird. The thing is like, like this is like an alpha card, you know what I mean? What, what is that card called? The watcher card that does like basically this thing. Now the interesting, I guess the interesting thing that I think about is I wonder if like the the mechanism for like if five is too many like i know what the reference is but i kind of think about um like the bomb is considered slow for example and that takes two turns uh the alpha beta omega card is also very slow and like not really worth it and this is like Five. Like, this is five. You have to draw five cards. You can get them all in one reshuffle, I suppose. The bomb also doesn't give you 40 block. Yes. I guess the idea is that, like, you randomly... What this card actually reads is, like, you draw... You can randomly draw a card, like when you draw a card proper from your deck, and then you you randomly get eight blocks. So this is kind of like it's more similar to Miracle, whereas the payoff part is like you store five draws for later, like the deal fifty to all enemies. It actually doesn't seem that bad. The, like getting block i guess the other thing to note is that giving yourself giving yourself block specifically in service of being able to draw more cards later like being able to assemble the thing the, the thing about giving stuff block right is that like it inherently gives you more time right which is usually why i might say something like 
a card or mechanism that doesn't advance the game forward, but only gives you, like, a lot of block or, like, an abhorrent amount of block, like, it's kind of not the best. Because either it's not strong enough such that, like, Slay the Spire is a rather aggressive game that, like, the timers are very aggressive, so they want to kill you. Um, or the amount of block that you get is, is rather... Like, it's, it's too strong. Like, the amount of time that it gives you is, like, too, like too much. Like, the, like, you could never possibly die. Interestingly, I intentionally did that with Flag Bearer. Right? Because I, I, I was wondering, like, oh, what is it... Like, what does it look like if you needed to... Like, how much time do you need to give yourself in order to, like, just feel comfortable sitting on, like a pile of value uh, and the answer was uh seraphim form when it didn't have any restrictions just meant you could sit against the heart and do nothing <laughs> um which was fine for a time and then i and then i didn't do it but or we changed it but that's kind of what i mean so the interesting thing about this card is what i'm saying uh is that this is kind of cool because you need time to activate the mechanism but it doesn't seem like it's, um, it doesn't seem like it's giving you infinite value. It's just giving you some nice value to kind of like stave some blows while you're you're drawing in order to to, to do the thing. Yeah, kind of weird that it has a nade, I suppose. T pose in the heart to assert dominance. Yeah, that was that was Flag Bearer's thing before. Gain two energy, draw three cards, remove all block you have. You cannot gain block from cards this turn. That's very interesting. Um, so this is this is meant to to give you energy to deal damage. So that's kind of cool. Okay. We'll be back in two seconds, BRB. Okay, we're back. Sorry, you mentioned something about, um... Okay. Not necessarily that you want to pick it up. It synergizes with the uncommon that exhausts them and the rare you have. Hmm. Yeah, the, I think this is, is cool that it synergizes with this thing. So I'm, I'm kind of tempted to do this one. This one's also kind of cool, because I could, like, copy this, for example, or, like, copy all of my siege modes. Um, I kind of want to do this one. Because it's like removals, but also we want to synergize it with this. So let's try that. Runic Pyramid. Everything has retained. That's not how that works. Okay. I was like, I was like, wait. Also, friend is what I thought uncollectible was. Uh, 
They can only be one friend card with the same name in the deck. Oh, like friend. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, you were mentioning something earlier about uncollectible. Where it's like you could only have one of them, right? My worry for Festival Gacha is that it'll totally mess with your attack or defense ratios. Yeah, see, I was thinking that, but there's a lot of cards which, like, um, which interact with shuffling your discard pile and stuff, and I'm assuming the purpose of Gacha Festival is to copy certain cards. I would assume buried cards, right? So... If your goal is to copy buried cards, then you can just wait for reshuffle because Festival Gotcha upgrades to having retain. Um, so that's kind of neat. I don't know what the um, verdict is on, you know, how much investment is fair or not fair, but yeah, I think we're going to take Rudic Pyramid. That's what I thought uncollectible did, since I hadn't internalized that collect was a keyword. Honestly, I just like picking up... I just like collecting stuff. <laughs> it's just... I just like going, oh, what's, a, what's, the, what's the thing that I get here? I just like enjoy doing that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we reshuffle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to say this doesn't go anywhere. But I also kind of want to remove this from my deck. Obviously you do, you made flag bearer. What what is that supposed to mean? What I like looking I like getting things at the bottom of my deck, is that what you're saying? What, just because like I'm a bottom or something? Come on, what's what's your problem? Talking shit? Okay, we got artillery them, right? Bonk. Cost one one less energy by one for each this card collected this combat. What? This might be a... Um... So you collected it, it goes down by one. I think that's the point. That's your words, not mine. <clears throat> I just want to understand why... You know. Seems too easy to cost reduce. Oh, it's just for each card you've collected. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, it's like streamlined, but you need to collect other cards. Yeah, I, I remember thinking about... Oh, is it each this card? Oh, is it? Yeah, you have to collect this card, right? That's how it works? Or is it each waiting line that you collect? I'm not sure, but I don't think I want to take it. Maybe I do. Maybe this is kind of like the collect payoff we're looking for to like do more damage. We need more, like, actual factual collect cards. Bonk. Bonk. Hmm. 
We don't reshuffle, so we can wait on this. Definitely not for any card collected. It's probably correct. This is kind of cool. We can uh, put the siege 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 mode, put the siege mode back in our deck, and then this one, and then this one. And then we don't we don't draw our deck now anymore. Oh, it's a little unfortunate that we have to actually play these cards before playing ordinary. Oh, you can also ordinary statuses and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Let's let's just let's do a little little bit of drafting. Not that we needed to, but it's a cool card. Oh, second Ordinary? Selects Pair Row Goods. At the start of your turn, use the effect of the selected Pair Row Goods. So this is just every turn do an effect. Every turn play a card. Like every turn get a zero cost card which does something. Choose a card from your drop pile and give it buried. Place it into your discard pile. Draw two cards. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. If you did that, that'd be pretty strong. If you did this one every turn. What about this card? This card seems cool. Yeah, so I, I really get the vibe that, you know, Buried is, like, not quite exhaust, you know what I mean? It's, like, just slightly not exhaust. Because this is... Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, it's just really cool. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's literally just cool. That's it. <laughs> That's all. It's just cool. Nice with your rare, better than ordinary, at least, when you just have the one. What's nice with my rare? This one? Like, I, I think we, we do that so that we can bin time on target. Artillery gets dumped in the yard. Yes. Unless we just like don't draw, you know. <laughs> you also just not draw it. Oh, we got rid of our AOE thing. Gotta say, picking up picking up siege mode is very satisfying. Uh, damage dealt by attack cards increases by one for every four cards in your discard pile. What the fuck? Huh? Yeah, buried payoff. Get strength for, for burying cards. 
I was trying to think of how that relates to all of the other buried things. Like, because there are cards which put buried, um, like multiple buried cards, right? Like the landmine card. So it's kind of like this card upgraded. Either it's like two landmines or like you do one landmine and then this is already active, which is kind of cool. I don't think we need it. We're not burying stuff in, like, large quantities, I don't think. But maybe it's just good? I don't know if we're, we're gonna have difficulties with damage. I wonder if... I wonder if we want to interact with this system and get the holy hand grenade. Man, this mod rules. I haven't caught myself just thinking, this is a cool effect with their kit. As much with any other character on Design Spire. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. I agree that there have been, there's like, been an immensely large amount of cool ideas. And like, this is the thing that I keep referring to whenever I say like, when there's a, de this is design intent, right? Where it's like, what do I want Collect to do? It's like, well, I kind of wanted to interact with this other system where, like, you kind of put cards away and then, like, you kind of draw them later and then, like, we're going to make them not reshuffle because because you want to, like, set stuff up for later and, like, collect stuff later. And then, like, your starter deck kind of primes you on doing that because it shows you a card that you want to draw later and then you want to play that card immediately and then pick it up later. Right? So, like, the starter deck tutorializes you on what you're going to be doing for the rest of forever. And then all of the other cards, like, kind of synergize with the idea of putting them there and then getting them later. Right? So it's like, that is, that's what design intent is. And I think they executed very well on it. Um, you know, barring, like, the classic... Like, what is this random anime card? <laughs> you know? Like, fair. <clears throat> I guess the idea with friend is that you can, like, make cards that would be too strong if you had multiple of them. It's kind of like my... It's kind of like Paradox, except I guess you can't... Like, you literally can't have multiple of the same card in your deck. So, sure, but th this feels like one of those, like, random anime girl cards where, like, you have to draft it and then sell it, and it's like, why? <laughs> why is that the mechanism for this card? And why is the why is the payoff that it gives you some random rare card? <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, I think we can take it. Here, look, it's Holy Hand Grenade. Deal 16 damage or use... Use your... Use yourself? What? <laughs> Heal 13. What did... What does the first part of that mean? What? Also, damn, we rolled so many rares. Start of your turn, five random cards. Your discard pile cause zero until played. That's kind of neat. Hmm. Am I obliged to buy Tiny Chest? Is that a thing that I have to do right now? Because I kind of want to go roll the gacha, but, you know, I would understand if I'm legally obliged. Uh... Oh, wait, we have that. Gain two intangible. This relic stacks are reduced by one during this combat. I mean, this just seems like rather strong, but this is probably too strong, right? Well, because what is that? We needed two uncommons, so it's like 150. So each of each of these is 300. So 600. 600 gold, though? 
I... Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it, it kind of... See, this is the thing where it's like, this is cool. And also, we can see that there's a mechanism to make it so that, like, you don't... <clears throat> like, it's only three intangible. I know that sounds like a huge meme. But, like, 600 gold? See, this is why it's kind of tough. Obligations must be met. I agree. I think I am legally obliged to buy Tiny Chest on this character. But, yeah, it's like, there's an event for that. But the thing is, the event is like, like, the things have, uh, like, exhaust and ethereal, and you have to, like, upgrade each one individually. So... Yeah, it's tough to, like, have a subsystem and be like, yeah, this effect is worth 600 gold. It's like... Okay? Like, people can get 600 gold, I guess. But I I guess the problem is that, like, gold is already such a difficult resource. Like, it's already contested by other things, right? Like, you want to spend your shop doing stuff. Whereas if you spend your shop interacting with the system to get up to this thing, then you're kind of like, oh. Like, you have to... You have to commit so much gold to it. It's one of those things where, like, I don't know if I would even give the player the option to do this. Like, that's kind of the thing, right? Where, like, you think, oh, what is the... Like, here are all these random effects that you can have. Like, the, the idea of this card is it's a toolbox card that kind of lets you do whatever, which is nice. I think particularly when the base deck doesn't have a full identity, right? It has this, but what is it actually doing, right? So you give it a toolbox effect, which is cool. And then you would say, oh, well, the toolbox effect is now that you get intangible, which is incredibly powerful especially as a toolbox card, which has Retain, right? So I almost just, like, wouldn't give them this option. There's got to be something else, right? But this is the problem, is that because it is a toolbox card, you, you want it to be a unique effect that... Oh, wait, hold on a second. No, 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 wait. This reduces the relic stacks, not the amount of intangible you get. So, you use it, and then you get two intangible. That's what it does, basically. That's more okay, I think. Because, sorry, the, the line of thinking that I was, was on was... You want good effects that aren't good all the time. So that this fills its role as a toolbox. That's what stacking it does. Yeah, you get more uses. So you can pay 600 gold to... Yeah, you can pay 600 gold to have a stack of two intangible. Again, it's still like a lot. I don't know. I would even say one intangible is already like good, you know? Like, you don't... It doesn't need to be too intangible. Like, one intangible with retain seems good. So. So, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. As long as the card removed from your deck, get rid of a strike. <laughs> Stupid note event. Incense Jar is random, but one intangible per fight for a relic isn't unheard of. Obviously not actually random, but close enough. Incense Jar is the one that stacks up, right? Like, ticks up? 
Yeah, my only thought was that, like, Incense Jar is... Like, that's the one that ticks up, right? Like, that's a random relic that you're not going to get every run. Six turns, you get an intangible. Yeah. The difference for me is that, like, that's a random rare relic, whereas this is one you build towards. So the problem with, like, a system that you can, like, always... You always have the option to get it is that, like, you can just save up 600 gold. And then if this is kind of, like... Probably the objectively best thing you could be doing at any point in time. It means that like I don't interact with the rest of the shop system and I just funnel all my gold into like interacting with this thing. Right? Whereas I think it's neat to have an opportunity cost of like, okay, do I need my card to give me block right now? And then I go like, okay, well I'm going into act two, you know, eventually, and I need to be able to produce 20 block on, like, turns pretty reliably. So I'm glad I picked the AoE one to start so that it could deal with slimes. But now I'm going to, like, consider whether I want to give that card block, and then maybe I'll buy it. Whereas, like, having two intangible is basically good all the time. So I feel like you would always want to, like, it might be too much of a dominant strategy, is what I'm saying because it's always there and it's reliable. So maybe this is in the category of like, yeah, if the player saves up 600 gold, let them win the game, right? This is just their way of saying, this is available to you. If you would like to win the game, you can save up 600 and that's like part of your gameplay. But to me, it almost feels a little like too reliable for 600 gold and like that's the tension i'm having with it whereas i almost wonder if like gain one intangible is more situational right it's not that much of a win the game yeah i'm not saying that this wins the game right it's that like Like, obviously, this doesn't say win the game, but it is like a one mana wraith form, right? And even then, wraith form is not guaranteed on silent because you need to. Like, it's a rare. You may or may not get wraith form. Whereas, like, my, my issue again stands with the fact that you can just, like, build this. Like, you can just do it. Um. Whereas I feel like a lot of the more broken cards, like, provided that they're not too broken, because, like, Wraith Form is really good, but, like, you don't have to draft it if there's, like, another card there that's... that is better for your deck at the time than Wraith Form. But slowly building towards this thing every time just kind of seems like the thing you want to be doing. New Ultra Kill update? Well, congratulations. I'm happy for you. Uh, I want to bury something. Uh, nope. I'm just going to do this. Actually, I could do this. And then bury like a defend. And then I could... Oh, why is defend on top of... Why is defend on top of... Didn't I time first? I guess I... I, I must have not, right? Uncollectible. Ah! You are correct. I have a pop of two cards. Oh, because I'm collecting two.
Punk. Whoa, golden ticket. I can get a rare, rare thing. Oh, are there different rares that aren't the thing? That aren't the other one that I... Nice to intangible really auto won you the fight. Yes, it, it really did. I guess I'm concerned about um, I was concerned about this card being like three mana or something and then I wouldn't be able to play it. I wonder if there's gonna be like an explicit um, artillery payoff. Do we know if there was one? Dang, popping off. I haven't seen one. Hmm. Add X whack four whack forty cards to your hand. Huh. It's kinda neat. So the problem with this card is that it it adds a lot of clunk to your deck. Wonder if motorcycle cover is good with all the artillery stuff. I kind of wanted to try that, so. Actually, how many block cards do we have? We basically have the starting block cards. Okay, let's try this. Um, gain two intangible. Laugh at my opponents. Yeah, the thing that I was wondering was that if, like, if the point is that the opportunity cost of playing artillery is that they kind of, like, clog your deck or something. Like, I can't really tell if that's intentional, right, good, bad, I don't know. I like how Ordinary interacts with, um, what's it called? Like these cards. I do find these a little weird. You know, like trading a card draft for a relic, I suppose. It's just a little, a little weird. I want more collect cards. <laughs> That seems like such a feel-bad way of balancing the cards. Yeah, it feels bad to to draw artillery cards. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like it needs to be mitigated by collecting cards you actually want to play, right? Like cards that are buried or something. So there's I suppose the balance of like drawing artillery cards and then mitigating them with collect. Or mitigating the downside with collect.
Hmm. We sure aren't doing a whole lot of damage. I guess when all of our damage is just in that artillery card and they heal for 36, it's kind of like... You know... You can see the, the problem. I think it lacks Wakamo from a design perspective. Why would you do one Sakura? Oh boy. Having, having some difficulty here. Thank God the cleric's dead. Let's go. Let's fucking go. just not taking cards. I wanted to upgrade this one. This dealt 19 because of Vigor, and then it did not consume the Vigor. That's interesting and probably not intentional. I can't imagine that that's immensely broken. It's just an interesting thing that it wouldn't... But yeah, it dealt 19. That's kind of interesting. Probably, probably not intentional. <laughs> So her staring at the enemy with her mouth. I think she wants to see what's under the robes. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus. Time to draft the all artillery and the one watcher card that gives bigger. <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty funny. Being able to exhaust eight cards is probably strong, so... Let us attempt. Get organized. Put a bunch of garbage in my discard. Like all of these blocks.
wondering how much I want to like just <laughs> ordinary all of this shit. My discard. Oh, if I bury a card, then it. But I guess. Hmm. Let's get rid of a couple of defends. Maybe this card, this one, and this one. Probably not waiting line. We'll bin this one. Also, shouldn't this cost zero? Or does it only ever go down to one? Akabeko? What about Akabeko? You only collected it once. Oh, I guess I did. I played it twice and I only collected it once. That makes sense. I still want the rampage effect so that I can do damage. Oh, we're, we're comboing now. Let's reshuffle all of this shit. So that we can t attempt to not die here. Two siege modes. We pick them up again. I, I suppose that does it, right? Bam! Artillery combo. Yeah, I mean that's that's how I interpreted the card, right? Uh, and it's really cool. Hey, that's the song that was playing at the start. When a card is sent to your discard pile, gain one block. Like, like what? Like whenever? Like when you bury cards? Like when you play cards? Whenever you play a card, get one block. Huh? Use a card. Uh, in your discard, take all cards of the same name as that card from your discard pile. Yo! That's kind of cool! I don't know what the non-upgraded is, but that's kind of cool. You just pick up all of your siege modes and go... Wow. 
fight for turn at least to find base value with a cool build around. Apply three weak and vulnerable. The target loses HP equal to two times the sum of all debuff values the target has. I'm not sure what this overlaps with. Like, I don't, I don't know what other debuffs I, I'm doing or debuffing. Uh, unfortunately, this card is not good um, because we have Runic Pyramid. So I'm going to do this one. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, dang, we we really can. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to artillery combo them into the sun. It is kind of weird that, like, I feel like Pyramid just makes this character play kind of weird. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it just feels weird. Because, like, Collect should have the downside that, you know, that I, that I collect things and then can't play them. But we have... We have Pyramid, so... Does this trigger the collect synergy? I know it doesn't say collect, but I'm kind of wondering if it does. You know? Oh, it's an attack card, so I can't play it anymore. Uh... Power story is kind of like echoing return, but kind of not. Echoing return? What the fuck? That's, that's kind of wild. That's a cool card. Weird, cool build-around card for the imitation stuff. You're, you just got back. Welcome back. Draft more siege modes and then pick up all of my siege modes. What's going on? I mean, we're mostly just. We're just playing through the thing. Deal 14 damage. If fatal, it evolves after the combat by choosing one of three random, three random upgrades. This is bizarre. <laughs> um. I mean, fair. I suppose it delivers on the, like, single card that you want to collect, and also it's, like, it's the great Peroro-sama, you know? So, like, that's important. So I suppose it's fine. I'm gonna not take it. Actually, maybe, I, I feel like our deck's maybe lacking a little bit, so. Of course we got a combat. Can I just discard everything? Let's do this. We didn't have to do the airtight storage, now that I think about it, but it's fine. Report, by the way, because no reason, just because I feel like it. What the fuck? 
Th this intangible has been exceptional. We are on Ascension 1, or 0, but... It's certainly been worth the investment, if anything. Airtight storage. Magic card. It's B to raise or black to raise dead all a creature and all creatures with the same name. Oh, I see. Only one siege mode in my yard. Does not uh, not deal with that. What if I? Oh, then I don't have enough energy. Cause say, what if I did this? What if I did? Gambler's brew. Or what if I just did damage? Twenty-seven. That also doesn't work. What if I just blocked? Siege mode isn't active yet because it. Yeah. Whoops. I guess we're just doing this. Which is not exceptionally good. <laughs> upgrade for the Peroro? Oh, uh, I don't know, because it came upgraded. Oh, I think it's it gets more uses or something. So you, you can upgrade it more times. Oh, that's not what I anticipated that was going to do, because I'm a goober. not realize that that's what that's what that was gonna do meant the upgrade you got from killing with it i thought you used it fatally yeah you do it afterwards which is why it's here deal seven damage twice deal 14 damage apply one vulnerable deal 17 damage i guess so this makes it 2x scaling this gives it vulnerable this gives it more damage yeah, end of combat upgrade. They're very weird. What is this? Select one collectible card from your draw pile and put it in your discard pile. The start of your turn, collect that card from discard. So, foolish burial something, 
and then put it put collect that card and it triggers collect this is two energy tutor for a card and draw it next turn is it every turn what the f what the fuck is this upon pickup choose a card start each card with a copy of the selected card in your discard pile <laughs> god damn it <laughs> so it gives it, it copies a card and makes a grave that's so funny i think we actually buy that so that we can so that we can bend this card or have a copy of it in the discard all the time. That's kind of cool. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can do this. What the fuck is this? Taro Roadzilla. When using summons an ally who deals 15 damage to all enemies at the end of your turn, at the end of each turn, if you already have an ally with the same name, Oh, the rare relic is random. The rare relic is random. It's not guaranteed every time, which makes it so that this isn't broken. That's cool. Okay. All right. We can rescind the entire discussion about this being a guaranteed build towards. Because I only saw one rare, so I assumed that it was the same rare every time. That's interesting. Okay. All right. That's fine. It's it's all good. Sure, let's try it. Um, it's getting intangible. Let's pick up the thing and do it again. What the fuck? <laughs> It's so cursed. It's so good, but it's so fucking cursed. <laughs> we saw the Ninfero in multiple gachas in a row. Was it? I thought I saw the same one. I actually don't know if it was. But yeah, that might have been. God, that's so funny. That's so fucking funny. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my god. Is this where I just say this mod was cute and funny out of time? We nailed it. Good job, everybody. We all did our job. Everyone go home. Congratulations. Like. <laughs> oh, man. We're just going to ordinary the this one. Maybe this one and this. <laughs> the first Gotti type game. Oh god. Oh hey, we can do this thing. Pick up all of my siege modes. Siege mode artillery blast them. That isn't actually true. That that is correct. It is that that's not actually true. 3D printer. Choose a card from your discard pile. Add one copy of that card into your discard pile, draw a card. We are absolutely going to siege mode combo wombo combo. Let's go. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this one. Um, all of these say collect, which makes me not want to play any of them. God damn it. Choose a common pair of row goods and increase its stack by one for this combat. Use the effect of it. Um... Okay. Nice.
Kinda love just cycling through the same garbage every turn. With how long this design aspire is, something tells me you enjoy this character, but probably not more than Decade. Oh yeah, Decade was amazing. Well, I just felt really bad because we were really distracted at the start. And as Poi was saying, like, this character is actually, like, pretty good. Like, got, got very clear things going on. There's not really much else to say, but I, I kind of wanted to keep playing. I'm surprised it's still going considering how you were feeling today. Well, yeah, I just, again, I felt kind of bad because the mod's actually good. And I just, I felt like I was doing a disservice by not, by being distracted. Uh... Okay, we're popping off. Holy shit, we're popping off. We are actually popping off so hard right now. Maybe I should be doing this one. I wonder if I should call it, maybe. As much as I am actually enjoying myself, I wonder if, like, maybe it'd be smart to stop playing, go lie down. All right, we're, we're gonna bargain. Wait, wait a minute. Oh my God, wait. <laughs> oh shit. That, I, I didn't even, I just didn't even think about it. I just, like, literally didn't think at all. I just, like, didn't think. I was not thinking. I did not thinking. There was no thinking. No thinking happened. Okay, now we're gonna... I want to pick up the other thing again. So we're gonna keep this defend here. And that's it. Now we should be picking up 3D printer. Then we're gonna 3D print one of the things again. Holy shit, I'm popping off. Oh my god. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> Disservice is impossible. Just save scum the timeline. Man, we are we are popping off. We are actually factually popping the fuck off. Infinite money glitch, just print more. Literally. <laughs> Literally what we actually did. Hilarious. Just print more money. It is very satisfying. Like, pretty exceptionally actually satisfying. Uh, hmm. Well, now we have a bit of a... We have a bit of a problem. I guess... We can just... We can just retrace... Uh, this one. And then get intangible. Wow. It just works. Nice. 
We are we are actually popping off so hard. Didn't kill with the doll. Oh, we could have, yeah. We could have. Popping off is obviously proof of <laughs> timeline safe scummery. Clearly. The only reason we are doing well is clearly because we save scummed. Okay, so this is that one and this one. We don't have that one. What's this one? With the mittens and the bag. When used, draw three. It's probably good. But I don't really want to do it. It's just gotcha. Nice. We could potentially AoE effect. This also says block. But we have the other one that says... Do I need to have a thing for, for that to work? Oh, where did it go? Don't I... It's on my deck, isn't it? Or did I randomly add it to my hand? It's fine. Hmm. Oh, I wanted the Rampage one, so maybe that. Yeah. God, I love all of these. I'm now... I, I really feel like I'm playing as Hifumi. Honestly, that's that's the most impressive thing that's been happening. Oh, God, I don't want to get rid of my airtight storage, though. Fuck, these are all good cards. Maybe the siege mode, like the second siege mode isn't important when we're going to 3D print. Um, we're going to 3D print time on target, so it doesn't really matter. Give me intangible is what I want to say. Maybe this is better. It wasn't better. I have dropped the damage dealers for the block summon since you can just summon Peroro Zilla. Yeah. I suppose so. Oh, right, the, uh, you were suggesting the, the hologram one. popping off. I wonder if we can actually win. That'd be kind of cool. I at least thought the hologram one was for the two damage dealing commons. Seems it wasn't. Hmm. Summon the guy. Oh, we did that super out of order, didn't we? It's fine. Wait, can I summon another one? The stack increases by one. Oh, we can. So if we're going to be getting intangible. And then we're going to 3D print this thing. And we're gonna bend this thing. Hmm. There's too much shit in my hand. I don't like it. Oh, we have pen nib. Pen nib is a thing. We're gonna end up reshuffling, so it's time to pop the ordinary. It's five, 
six. Maybe that's it. Just those six. The strike. Seven. Looks good to me. Oh, we could have airtight storage, I guess. shovel those. Three D print more of these. to remove this so that we could get the payoff. I forgot that was a thing. Right, I keep forgetting that I have the collect payoff thing. Three mana card that hits more times based on the amount of friend cards you have would have been sick here. Yeah, because we have like seven billion of the things just chilling in our yard. It's pretty awesome. It's like I want to lethal the thing with the para row. There we go. Actually, does that count? Does that not count because it was only one of them? Hmm. sell the thing now. Also, I keep looking at the cards and seeing the golden border and being like, ah, these are all rares. And they are not rares. I keep thinking they're all rares. They're not rares. <laughs> what is the friend card we got? Ah, hey, we got the thing. Hey, look, it's the thing. It's literally the thing we were talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna find a way to fuck this up. For real, for real. I, I do legitimately feel like we are kind of light on block. So, that's unfortunate. Let's bin this one. This one. Shuffle. This one. Probably counted, but I don't know if you get the upgrade since there's no reward screen. The pair there would have been sick. Which power? Hmm. 
Hmm. I want my intangible. I guess this is 10 block. This is already 10 block. damage with cards and discard power in the shop. Oh. Hmm. I did not see it. I was too busy thinking about selling the friend card. So what are we doing here? Still trying to draw the 3D printer. Let's leave a bunch of garbage in our yard. Ah. Intangible! You didn't have the, the money after selling anyways. We could have considered it, though. We cold, cold have considered it. This just does a bunch of damage, right? <laughs> mm. Shit. I guess we could do this. I guess we still need to roll well. I did not consider. Does Pendip... Does this work? This shouldn't work, right? But it did for the other thing. Oh my god, it doubled everything. That's crazy. <laughs> so if we leave Pendip on 9... <laughs> the stack of random parallel goods you own increases by 1. I don't know if we care about 5 max HP, unfortunately, but the other thing might, unfortunately, just be better. I don't know what this does, and I don't want to risk it right now. Okie dokie. Well, that's good. We can just get the two intangible. I think that's what I want to be doing. Just want to not die. Oh, I'm such a goober. It's, it's the frickin', it's bullets first. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, luckily, I don't die, but...
these ones a burn and a strike defend probably this one as well uh i think that's it Guys, I think we're not doing enough damage. <laughs> it might just be me, but I, I think I think we're not not exactly doing the most amount of damage here. I'm a little concerned. Wait, why is this at 1? Didn't I already use it? Did it randomly go up because of this thing? Is is Perorosama saving the day? The absolute god? All hail Peroro Sama. Is this is this what this is? Is this what's happening? Am I understanding this correctly? Oh my god. Oh my god. We were saved by the almighty Peroro Sama. Oh my god. That's so funny, dude. That's actually so funny. Um, oh, I think it only counts cards in deck, maybe. Because that didn't seem like it did damage 12 times. Two intangible isn't an auto win. Four, however. Plus the plus the incense burner. Damn. Oh no, wait, I used motorcycle cover so I can't do it with this. No! No, let me do it. Let me do it. No. Alright. Well. That was incredible. I think that's got to be one of the most... One of the most mods I've ever played of all time. Wow. <laughs> oh. Whack. We've got whack. Oh. She's... She's flying on the... On the Peroro-sama. And that's the void. What is happening? I wish I knew what that meant, but we sure did it. Let's go! Let's go! Look at all of the Peroro-samas! Let's go! Wow. More understandable heart panels than Flag Bear? You shut the fuck up. <laughs> Look at them! Look at all of them! Look, they're all falling! Whoa! Incredible. Actually, incredible mod out of 10. Okay. Um, I suppose closing thoughts we will do in two moments. I really liked it. Yeah, it was really cool. Okay. Closing thoughts. So, the first thing that I wanted to point out, and more mods need to do this, um, in my opinion, the two base deck cards basically completely explained what you are going to be doing with the character. This is 
immensely important. Uh, sometimes I really feel like the base deck cards, like, don't exactly tell you what you're going to be doing. But I really liked how, like, this mod was like, you are going to use this card. It's really good. Use it again. <laughs> like, really, really, really strong. Like, you figure out what Collect does through the base deck, and you're like, wow. This is just everything I want to be doing all the time. We are going to praise the, the great and almighty Pororo-sama. And that's literally all we're going to do all the time. Uh, it had a secondary currency system with the gold. Oh, uh, there was a really good observation at the start that... Um, literally the point that this gives you gold after the fact, like after the first combat... Um, is so that you can dodge Niao draining your gold. Uh, I think there was another character that started with one gold. Um, and then we commented how that kind of shifts the balance of, of the things that, like, make you pay all of your gold at the start. This is an incredibly smart way to dodge the interaction with, with Niao. The reason, by the way, that this gives 75 gold is because of the secondary, um, the secondary currency or like the, the, the extra system with the goods, because you can pay 75 to gamble for like a common, uh, or it's half of one of the commons that you choose from. So this is fucking incredible. The other thing about this too, is that, um, you can just relic swap this and then wait till later to get a goods which sort of fucks your starter deck, but I think is not, like, like, it doesn't, it doesn't actually ruin the gameplay of the character, which is awesome because that's sort of like, you don't need this, right? I, I've talked before about how, like, you're starting, yeah, the starting relic, oftentimes what people do, and this is like, this is sort of a, a restriction on the programming because it's all in Java, like, there's no... There's no, um, what's it called? Workspace. So it's a little hard to figure out where everything is. It's a little hard to, like, code things directly onto the character, especially when, like, a lot of it's put in this, like, profile or in the starter deck card. So, like, if there's something that's just inherent to the character, it's hard to, like, Watcher, for example, has stances baked into the starter cards, but this isn't, like, stances aren't baked into pure water. But what people often do is they program into the into the the starting relic, um, which is unfortunate because it means people can't relic swap. Uh, but I, I I know why they do it. Uh, you, usually it's because like just figuring out how to bake in the programming to the character itself is uh, a little complicated. Uh, but this is really awesome, really awesome starting relic. Uh, Super big fan of how Collect played. Um, as I was saying, Artillery is a really cool way that, like, Collect circumvents the problem where drawing cards... Um, drawing cards inherently put strain on your energy, um, but this allows you to draw Artillery cards, which then you're not concerned about... Um, you're not really concerned about the energy stuff. Uh, this was a really cool way to interact with, like, what card is up next on Collect. There were a few ways to do that. For example, cards that have buried. So, like, they don't reshuffle. They'll just stay there. It means that your Collect on reshuffle is going to pick up this. Or even if you pick this up and then play it later, then your Collects can start picking up something else. But then on reshuffle, this is still your first Collect, which is super awesome. Um, there were definitely some cards that, like, we looked at some cards that felt a bit off. Like, I don't know how this card works. <laughs> or how we can get this card to work. I don't know if there was a thing I was missing, but it did not seem like it was easy to, like, like, weaken or vulnerable. Or why that, like, you know, that's a card, for example. Um, I kind of question the balance of the goods in general. Oh, the upgrade on the starter card was also really cool because 
Like, this is inherently a toolbox card, so giving it retain is a very interesting upgrade. Double skill in the starter deck means your knob matchup is really hard, which is probably why this card exists. But, like, you know, I don't, I don't really know what to do with that. So, yeah. Well, that was sort of an issue with Flag Bear at the start. Uh, uh, which? Sorry, I missed the context. But I... Was in relation to? Java is fucking hell for game coding. I'm really surprised they are notch for their games. Relic swapping. Oh yeah, relic swapping for Flag Bear. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh... Because, like, I ran into the similar issue of, like, I don't know how to make the stance stuff work uh, without putting it somewhere. And then, like, now it's sort of a little bit more even. Yeah, artillery as a mechanic was really cool. It's kind of weird that, like, there's, like, the opportunity cost of, like, adding more artilleries to your deck. And then your draw doesn't draw from deck, which means you can potentially run into, like, drawing a bunch of artillery, not wanting to play any of it, and then, like kind of being stuck i'm willing to admit that that's probably just supposed to be the opportunity cost of this thing but as poi was mentioning earlier it's kind of feels bad um like i it almost feels like they should auto bury themselves or something but like it can't bury itself because then it interacts with the collect stuff so like maybe you want it to exhaust after it's played but then it doesn't synergize with picking the stuff up again. Maybe it has exhaustive. So, like, you can use it once. So it synergizes with collecting once for every reshuffle. But then, like, it doesn't stay there. So, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Car wash. What the fuck? Uh. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. There was a lot of charm. And I think that comes from the fact that this character in universe is just a just a dumb goober who really likes Pororo Sama. Forfeit all your material possessions to Pororo Sama. Exactly. Cool mind blast reference. Where is it? Oh, Hifumi Blast. Deal 7 damage for each grave cards in your discard pile. That's cool. Uh, oh, and it has a nay. Oh, so your grave cards just go in at the start and you go... Bzz. That's kind of cool. That's cool. It's a cool twist on that card. Um, yeah, I was really looking for this card at some point in time. Uh, this card is a very simple collect payoff that I felt was good. Oh yeah, there was also the... Um, what was it? Yeah, the this card was like... Uh, this was a weird card of like... Oh, I don't know if this is uh, playable. Like, it seems kind of gimmicky. But I think all of the stuff is in place for this to work. Because we commented on the like... You gain block when you draw the card... Again, it is kind of weird that you don't... I don't think anything draws innately. Like, nothing just draws cards, which maybe... Oh, there's the one card. Secondhand trade. Like, there's that. Um... So, yeah, I think this... I think this mod did a lot of things right. I don't know how to feel about these, like, unplayable cards that you kind of have to cash in at the shop. Maybe that's, like fine it could just be fine it's possible that the the toolboxiness of the intangible on that one peroro thing is just like maybe too good i don't know but it is random so you know it's maybe closer to the intangible vial than the other stuff very little some stuff cycles like 3d printer yeah 3d printer draws you a card so yeah i think there's a lot of cool things there's also a lot of weird shit like this where you kind of go like making this card your one card that you want to buy back with collect makes a lot of sense but it's just such a weird card
It's so weird. You know what I mean? It's just weird. Like, why do I need to fatal things? Why am I upgrading it five times? It's just weird. <laughs> it's also hard to tell what it's going to upgrade into. Right? Which is maybe okay. You don't need to know what it upgrades into. You just do it. And then you kind of figure it out as you play the character. Like, that's probably fine. You know? It's just such a weird card. It's like, it's always the weird, like, meta... The, the, the reason why I find this card weird is that it's like a meta scaling card that has fatal on it at uncommon. You know what I mean? That just feels weird. I almost want this to be the rare fatal card because this one, the Pororo lesson card was just like, like this card's weird. That's kind of the whole mod, no? Weird, but makes sense from a design perspective. Yeah. I guess it, that's one of the things where I go like, this is probably maybe not how I would have done it. Like I would see this card as like a rare, like the rare fatal and maybe you make it do more damage or something, but like, it's not bad, I don't think. It's just weird. Like what a weird card. Why is this an uncommon? It's so weird. <laughs> um. And yeah, I, you know, I, I don't want to say like weird as like it's immensely negative, you know what I mean? Like, it's fine. It's just like, I never would think to put your meta scaling card at uncommon and also make it fatal and what, like, you, you increase the amount of times you can upgrade. It's like so weird. What a weird card. <laughs> but yeah, this, this mod fucking rocks. This mod was awesome. I don't know, like, there were some things we didn't see. So like, for example, like, I don't know what this means. Like this kind of feels like, I don't know what use yourself means. I know that I, I focused in on that last time, but like, I still really don't know. Like, is this supposed to just be heal 10 to yourself? Like, do you take 10 damage first and then do this? So like, I don't know. Friend was an interesting, like, way to say that this is a unique card. Like, the Paradox equivalent, where it's like, this card is really strong. And I was I was about to say, because I caught myself, but I was about to say, like, this kind of feels like it's going to run into the problem that Drain Time had, where it was just like, oh, I have, like, 50 Drain Times, and it's like, but you can't do that as Friend. You would need to pair it with 3D Printer. Uh, this card was very interesting because it's like the exhaust equivalent like it's that uncommon card that lets you exhaust three five cards but this is five eight um and also it doesn't exhaust them it buries them which means you can still reshuffle them with some of the reshuffler cards like there's a lot of like tiny things that are like oh wow that's really interesting that you can <clears throat> that you can do something cool with that that's like slightly different enough from exhaust right and um yeah i guess that's that's maybe like a good thing to to leave it on which is that like cool interesting little changes in how things interact like collect is if you really want to boil it down and like this is why you can't boil down mechanics is that if you want to boil down collect in a spreadsheet what collect looks like is plus one draw card like, that's how you input collect into a spreadsheet. Is you just say it's draw a card. But the thing is, it's not draw a card. Right? Like, so so it's little tiny things like that that create gameplay. Um, which is fucking awesome. Um, yeah. This mod was immensely cool. I can't say that, like, all of it is... 1 billion percent balanced because there was definitely some weird shit like the weakened card i know that there was more weird shit i'm just not recalling it right now <clears throat> but yeah it's it's really cool all the like little tiny like grave is weird innate but it's in it's innate in your discard like fascinating mod okay so that's gonna be it 
very cool mod. Thank you to who was it that made this one? Joy1999 fucking popped off with this one. Yeah, mod was pretty cool out of 10. Pretty cool out of 10. Cool verbs, cool effects, cool shit. Good indicators. Yeah, there was also good indicators on like all of the cards. Can you check relics and potions? So there was this one. We know th this one was a thing. Where you like increase your Pororo good stacks. Uh, I don't know what else there is. Because this is supposed to have a color. I don't think it has a color. I don't know if there's any other potions. Oh, there's a collect potion. Collect three. It's cool. Oh yeah, by the way, collect also says draw when you have nothing in your discard pile. Uh, which is cool. Because there's a chance that it's like... That your first collect like isn't playable or not good. You, you saw me run into that on... Like, I think the first turn of the heart or sentries or something. Where I could have played any of those cards to just draw the card first. But I, I really thought like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Like, I kind of want to pick up a card from my discard and stuff like that. But, yeah. So there's that. Uh... Oh, I guess all of, the, all of the, these are technically relics. So they were put there. I imagine you don't find them in the relic pool. But they're there. I don't know what their common relic is. I don't know if they have one. I don't see a common relic. What's the square one? Oh, this one? Oh, right, this one. Okay, yeah, yeah, this one is actually... This was their common relic, I guess. Sorry, it looked like the other ones. So I was like, oh yeah, that's just this one. We actually got this one. I don't know if it was on our first or second run, but we got this one. Also, the, the fucking bottled Peroto, like, god damn it. So funny. Actually so funny. Uh, I don't know if this is base deck. I don't know if these are base deck. Yeah, this is from the Hifumi mod, so... I don't know what they are. I guess we'll need to play it to find out. Yeah, there's there's all of these. Whatever this is. This one? Yeah, because I because I didn't get them. We can cheat and go look at them, technically. We could we could just start playing and then add all the relics. And then find them, but I'm not gonna do that because you just go play this mod. Yeah, it was cool. All right, so that's gonna be it this time for Design the Spire. I'm gonna go lie down. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thanks for being here. Appreciate your support as always. And I will see you next time. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye bye.